What's up, everyone? We are live at five here at Broadway.com. It is Wednesday. It's June. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, June thirteenth. My paper said Wednesday, and I believe it's what's in front of me. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. Anyway, it's Thursday. Thank it's God, Thursday. it's Thursday. Love Thursday. I'm Paul Wontor, and I'm Ryan Lee Kilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan, who thinks it's Wednesday. It's Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. We are not rewinding this week. No. no. We are getting through post-Tonys week. Yes. Uh, and speaking of the Tonys, one yes. of the amazing performers you no doubt cheered on when you watched the Tony Awards because he was fantastic, he as was, was the fantastic. entire ca cast of Ain't Too Proud, yes. The Life and Times of the Temptations. Who's here? <laughs> James Harkness Woo! is here. Yes. Woo! Love and adore He's here. James Harkness. He's fantastic. I can't wait to talk to him all about his journey. But first, today's top five. This magician is coming to Broadway. And it's not a secret. Oh, look uh, at that. See how I did? Yes. Uh, this is Darren <laughs> Darren Brown, colon, Secret, is the show. Uh, it, it had an off-Broadway run. It was like a sold-out hit through the Atlantic Theater Company. It's moving to Broadway. It will play Broadway's Court Theater. Uh, it'll begin previews on September 6th. It'll officially open on September 15th. And it will play through January 4th, 20. Um, this is directed, co-directed by Andrew O'Connor and Andy Nyman, and um, here's what it does. Darren Brown, The Secret, transports audiences into the startling world of mind reading, suggestion, and psychological illusion. So it's a magic show, but it's like a elevated. I think super I need to cool open myself up show. to magic shows. It's yeah, maybe. so fun. maybe. Maybe I, mean, I need to go see it. Well, you know, I've I feel heard like great that, I was going to say, there are some that you know, you don't hear as great things about, and then there are some that you hear are phenomenal. And this one, yeah, I'm sold out run. A lot of people loved it. It sounds really cool. He's a very cool guy. So maybe this will we'll maybe this will change your mind. Come yeah. on in. Come on Show in, us Darren some Brown. Always. <laughs> All rise for Ed Harris. Yeah, so. Yes, yeah. I don't big think we story. were expecting this news, but. No. So the New York Times broke the news that Ed Harris is replacing Jeff Daniels into Kill a Mockingbird this yeah. fall because mm -hmm. Jeff Daniels is doing He's a doing full, full year long year. run. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the production is not confirming this news, by the way. Um, no. But but we assume it came, I think it came from a casting well, so, yeah, notice the, and, or Well, something. the New York Times is saying that they in the paper this weekend, there's going to be, like, the, it's going to sort of say that. Like, yeah. They're like, cheating? They're yeah, like, I, so, you I know? don't know. Who knows? It's very mysterious. Anyway, I assume it's true. He's fantastic. He will take over as Atticus Finch, uh, on, Nove Finch on November 5th. Yes. And Jeff Daniels leaves November 3rd, which is always the date he had planned on leaving. Uh, Ed Harris got a Tony nomination when he made his Broadway debut a long time ago in Precious Sons before he became a big movie star. And he's been on Broadway, off Broadway since. Yeah. He, he does a lot of theater. And he has had four Oscar nominations and three Emmy nominations. He's a fantastic actor. I'm really excited to see what other cast members might yeah. be coming Absolutely. this fall. Because To Kill a Mockingbird, it's not going anywhere. It's a big yeah. hit. <laughs> And these stars are helping bring this beloved story and movie to life on stage. We are talking about The Notebook. So this oh. is Ingrid Michaelson's, uh, she's writing the music for this. We've been hearing about this for a very long time. And there is a, uh, there's a reading happening. We got some casting today. So they are doing a similar thing, at least in this reading, where they are taking the two main characters, Noah and Allie, and they are breaking them up in three different stages of their lives. And so Allie, young Allie, will be played by Haley Kilgore, Ooh. Tony nominee Haley Kilgore. And then me, uh, middle Allie will be Vanessa. Hudgens, and then older Allie will be Candy Buckley. As for Noah, wow. young yeah. Noah will be Antonio Cipriano, who's also going to be in Jagged Little Pill. Um, middle Noah will be Clifton Duncan, and then older Noah will be uh, Tony winner James Naughton, which is very exciting. Right? So, Drama. I mean, incredible talent involved in this reading. Uh, the cast will also include Jelani Aladdin, Nicholas Belton, Janet DeCall, Millie Diaz, Jennifer Mudge, and Ben Jackson Walker. Tony nominee Michael Greif is directing this reading, and it features a book by Becca Brunstetter. Uh, it will play Vassar College's Martell Theater on June well, 23rd. This is part of uh, New York Stage and Film, and you can go. This yes, is, you people, can. This you is can, happening This is not at a reading that we're talking PM. about that only the industry can go to. You right. can get tickets to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably. Probably not anymore. Probably not anymore. But, um, but you can beg. Like, and, and this is a big title. Like, it's only they're doing it once. Yeah. They're doing it once on a Sunday afternoon. Right. At three, so. Yeah. But I think we're going to be seeing a lot of the notebook. Oh, yeah. Up, so. It's coming. 
And this new version of a classic story is, bringing, is heading back across the pond. So everyone I'm knows The Visit as a Cheetah Rivera musical, Absolutely. of course. Mm -hmm. But so The Visit is actually a classic play mm -hmm. that the musical was based on. Mm -hmm. It is a play by, what was the name of that, uh, that the original playwright? Friedrich Durenmont? Nailed it. Sure. Yeah. Nailed it. Sure. Nailed off the top. Uh, it's about a woman, Claire, who is a, an often widowed millionaire who goes back to the, her birth town she and does. it's not doing well and she comes back with first. Mm -hmm. And she basically, hated me then. yes. She hated me now. So the news <laughs> is that Tony Kushner wrote a yeah. new adaptation of it and it's called The Visit or The Old Lady Comes to Call. I like it. I like something so direct. Yeah. Uh, Oscar nominee yeah. and Olivier winner Leslie Manville oh will star. Goodness. Are you excited? Are you a Did big you fan? He Phantom clutched Fred? the heart. Oh, that's she her. She was fantastic. unbelievable in Phantom she is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's gonna be Claire. Yeah. Um, so I finally saw that movie. By the way, it took me a long time to see it's it, but incredible. I loved it. It's yeah. incredible. And movie. she's the best part. Uh, Tony and Olivier nominee Jeremy Heron will direct. This is at the Olivier Theater at the National, starting in February of 2020. Should be good. And some of our faves are heading to the woods. Yes, Into the Woods, the benefit concert that's being presented with Cleveland Musical Theater is Into happening. Into the Woods is happening everywhere, by it's the way. It's happening all, all the over the They're doing it up in the Berkshires, yep. and they're doing it in, in L.A., the Hollywood Bowl. They are, and they're doing oh, it yeah. At Town Hall. And so they're doing it at Town Hall here on July 8th. Um, and this is the one, of course, we've already found out. We already know Alice Ripley, Tony Yazbek, Betsy Wolf, Caitlin Houlihan, Kate Schindel. They've already been announced for this, and now we get some new casting as well today. Kaylee Ann Voorhees... Oh, I love and adore. She's playing Rapunzel. Susan Blackwell, Broadway.com contributor side Susan by Blackwell. Side by. She's going to be the voice of the giant. Pamela Myers is going to be Jack's mother. Lee Wilkoff, Tony nominee, is going to be Mysterious Man. Timothy Warman is going to be Cinderella's father. And T. Boyich is going to be Lucinda. Um, what else do you also need to know? Yes, it's being presented in support of Cleveland Musical Theater. The production, they'll be joined by a chorus of Cleveland talent. That'll be interesting, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Yeah, in a live orchestra. And all proceeds will benefit the professional opportunities and education in Cleveland. And like I said, Town Hall, July 8th, 7.30. Maybe there are still tickets available, but when Alice Ripley's involved... That's just fly. like Alice Ripley, by the way. We're gonna, yeah. We should talk about this weekly. She's doing Sunset Boulevard She's in Massachusetts Sunset Boulevard. in late yes. September. So yeah, just plan Norma on Desmond. that. Yeah. North Shore Music Just plan on it. Just <laughs> we plan follow on. Alice Ripley around. <laughs> we do. Also on the site is Eva episode six of Eva yeah. Nopozala's vlog. Is, she, is it Tony themed? I mean, I believe she. I we see her yet. go to. Yeah, she's prepping ready. for the Tonys. Yeah, and we find out. Yeah, so cool. they had a big night. So okay. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. My Ron. pleasure. Have a lovely weekend. We're Thank not here on so Fridays much. in the summer, no. just in case you guys haven't realized. We take summer Fridays. We do. In the summer. You know who doesn't. Today's guest, no. Caitlin, <laughs> tell everyone about him. Gladly. Yes, we have James Harkness here with us in the studio because he is currently wowing audiences and ain't too proud hyphen or colon hyphen the life and times of the temptations. He has previously been seen on Broadway in the color purple, Guys and Dolls, Chicago, Aida, beautiful. He is incredible. Make sure you follow him on Instagram at harkness.lord.harkness because he's got a lot of really good content over there. Do not miss out. Leave all of your questions in the comments below, and please welcome James and Paul. Hello. Thank you, Caitlin. No Hello, sir. How you doing? How did you become a lord? <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, it was a nickname that was actually given to me while I was doing Aida, okay. my first Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And it was given to me by Asmarette Geber Mikkel. Oh, we okay. love Asmarette. Yeah. Say her name again, because everyone needs to learn how to say it properly. Asmarette Geber Mikkel. Yep, you do it good. And Beautiful. also Nina Lafarga had a hand in it as okay, well, which okay. we love Nina Lafarga. I love Nina Lafarga. We just did a, got got a, a dance, dance with Nina. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, incredible. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you and, are the uh, Lord. Yes, yeah, so I was. it was given to me, and I, as I said to them both, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it because, you know, it would be called Lord Harkness. And yeah. I was like, what does that mean, and what right. are you trying to say about right, me? Right. And, uh, but then I realized that it was all in love. Yeah. And once oh, yeah. I embraced it, mm -hmm. uh, it's now like become, people call it, call me that a lot. I love mm -hmm. it. Like it's stuck. Right. And once people know that that's what it is. It reminds me of Queen Leslie. Leslie Margarita's Queen Leslie. You know, just so why not? Everyone take a title. You're calling take me Take a title. <laughs> How's life? You're having a good year. <laughs> I mean, you've had a good few you years. You avoided that one. You avoided that <laughs> one. <real quick>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about 2019. 
Mm. Because you, are, I just saw Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations. How often do you say the full title? You just say Ain't Too Proud. I've actually never said the full title. <laughs> don't ain't don't you proud. never should. <laughs> uh, and actually, didn't I feel like they said on the Tony's Ain't Too Proud to Beg, maybe. I feel like that's like people a common will, because mistake. Because it's one of the titles of the Temptations song. So yeah, of people course, it's a song. definitely yeah. have a tendency to say it because it just kind of naturally rolls off of course, their tongue. Of course. And it's one of many fantastic songs yeah. that you get to live in. Yeah. Right? I mean, this yeah. is it's really sort of like the soundtrack of your life right now. Right now, most definitely. And it was also also part of the soundtrack of my life growing up because mm -hmm. Temptations music was playing at home in mm -hmm. our house and on the radio. It's one of those, they're one of those groups there that their music really does truly live on. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can still hear My Girl and Just My Imagination and songs like that on the radio. Mm -hmm. So it's classic music that will not be going anywhere anytime soon. Do you hear the, it's not, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere on Broadway anytime soon because <laughs> it's a big hit. Do you hear the audience react to certain songs. I mean, when I was there the other night, I feel like when Just My Imagination came out, you felt everyone just kind of like, <gasps> Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> it really is the soundtrack to so many people's lives. Yeah. You know, one of the most beautiful things about music to me is that it's key points in different places in your life. Mm -hmm. And you hear the first chord or you hear a lyric and it immediately takes you to those places. So, you know, we have so many people that come see the show that grew up with that music, mm -hmm. you know, and it immediately does that to them. So you hear people, oh, ooh, oh, yes, mm -hmm. all of those types yeah. of things. Um, and it's almost for every song. Actually, almost every song I'm actually sure, yeah. does happen. Yeah. Yeah. So you're playing Paul Williams. Yes. Um, I just went on a, a YouTube spiral Did looking you? up Paul Williams. I mean, that's, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a real man, um, and a you, real man. And you real, you really learn his story. <laughs> you are playing a real person. Yeah. Um, are there family members? Uh, there are around? some family members. Uh, Paul um, is no longer with us. He is no that's part of the us. story of the musical. Um, his nephew is in the Temptations band. He plays with the Temptations now. Oh, okay. Um, and um, I met a cousin of his recently randomly yeah. uh at a in toronto so we were checking into our hotel wow. in toronto and this guy i had my luggage with me and i had one of my tags that said the temptation yeah. that said ain't too proud and he asked me a question oh actually it wasn't a luggage tag is our the sweatshirts that we mm -hmm. have that jeremy pope designed for us that say the temptations and it has stuff so he was oh, cool. like oh uh, why are you wearing that? And I was like, well, I'm in this musical called Ain't Too Proud, and uh, I play Paul Williams. And he was like, Paul Williams is my cousin. Oh, wow. And it was the most random meeting. Wow. You know, so, yeah. So do you, is, is there a little bit of weight to that? And, and Paul had a sad story. I mean, when you a see the musical, I mean, it, it was, it was def it's definitely one of the really emotional storylines in, in Ain't Too Proud. Um, do you feel, and especially when you do like the YouTube spiral and you see the real footage of him and you yeah. see all this sort of stuff you can glean from, yeah. what, what, how does that all sort of influence your performance and what you're doing on that stage? Uh, you know, the thing that got me the most was finding out that he had sickle cell anemia. Yeah. And uh, I know that sometimes when people come see the show and he did have a drinking problem and the drinking problem stemmed from as the, sh as the group got more and more and more and more popular yeah. and success started doing the things that it did right. to various people, he started breaking down because success, as you could tell with the show, it was not always the best thing. Right. And he loved what he did so much. And he loved the men that he did it with so much. Mm -hmm. They were truly a brotherhood. But the group was disintegrating. And one of the ways that he escaped from it was through drinking. Mm -hmm. But the other reason that he was drinking was to numb the pain of mm -hmm. sickle cell anemia. Yeah. And there are many people out there who have that disease. And it's, it's debilitating. Yeah. You know, it affects your joints. And you have pains in places that it's hard to diagnose because it's not the same for every person. Mm -hmm. And especially back then, having to deal with that where the doctors didn't know as much as they know right. now. Right. So one of the easiest ways to get away from pains is to use substances. Right. And for him, his choice was alcohol. Right. 
you are giving a fantastic performance. It's I appreciate very that. moving Thank and you. very exciting. I mean, when you're, you, when you dancing is very exciting to watch. I mean, I you got the moves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is. Thank you, Sergio. This is the yes, Sergio Tony winner, Sergio yeah, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, this is this, this is the biggest opportunity you've had on Broadway thus far. Yes. You, you've done a lot of work in the ensemble of, yes. of Broadway shows, and Great you've theory. covered a lot of roles yes. over the years. But this is a nice, juicy opportunity, right? Yeah. And so, how did this come to you? Uh, what was what what sort of, what was your journey to this show? And I know the show's been around for a few years. Yeah, a couple we're, of years. We're getting before. on coming up on two years. Right. Okay. So how did, what was the first audition like? How did you get it? Huh. Well, um, I was in Beautiful the Musical at the time. The Carol King the Musical. The Carol King Another Musical, which is still Very running, nice and yes. I'm so grateful to be an OBC, original Broadway cast, if most of you guys know what that means already. <laughs> um, I love that show, yeah. so always grateful. Uh, so all the drifters in yeah. that show right, you were, drifter, were yeah. auditioning. I was a drifter, That's and a they, were, they were yeah. all going to this audition okay. for the the project, the, the Temptations mm -hmm. project, right. except me. <clears throat> and I was actually really kind of bothered by the fact that right, I like wasn't called in yeah. for, especially once I found out who was casting, and I was mm -hmm. like, but they know me. So <laughs> right. I was like, what's wrong with me right. is the first thing uh -huh. that always pops into right. an actor's mind or performer's mind when you're not getting called in for something that all the other people that look mm -hmm. like you sure. are being called in for. And uh, so I had a little passive aggressive moment with it. And then once I got past that, um, the day before the audition, um, I can, you know, y'all know Doug Lyons mm -hmm. of Lyons and Pac Char, the amazing Doug Lyons. So he turned to me in the dressing room and said, are you going to this Temptations thing tomorrow or not? And I took a moment and I picked up my phone and I texted Sergio. And I just said, hey, I know it's been a minute, um, but I know you're doing this What did you do with him in the past? Oh, man. Serge and I have such a huge history. Oh, okay. um, we came into contact with each other when I first moved to New York, so early 2001. Okay. Uh -huh. I auditioned for him for this musical that was being written about the people that worked on the skyscrapers and helped build oh, skyscrapers. Right. Okay. And he was going to be the choreographer uh -huh. for that musical, and he liked what I did, yeah. and he asked me to come in and start helping him with movement right. on that. Okay. And and we continued right. working together quite a bit after that. Uh, I assisted him on Memphis. I assisted him on Leap of Faith. I assisted him on Guys and Dolls. I did Guys and Dolls with him on Broadway. Right. Right. Um, I've had the blessing to work with him quite a few times. Uh, we did Mambo Kings in San Francisco. Ah. Yeah, yeah, which was that choreography was I mean, incredible. I, that was one show I was dying to see. Jordan Roth produced that. Yeah. I was dying to see that sh musical. It anyway. was uh, it was really really yeah, really cool. Beautiful. The choreography was stunning. Um, so we we have a long history. Yeah. Uh, so I reached out, sent him a text saying, "Hey, I know it's been a little while, um, but I hear you're doing this Temptations thing tomorrow, and I would love to be in the room. But if not, I also understand." Mm -hmm. And sent mm -hmm. off the text. And a minute later, almost exactly a minute later, a text pops up that says, "Please come." So I was like, okay. So I got my butt up and went to the audition the next morning. And five auditions later, I'm here. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they needed people who could really move. I mean, th this is a this show moves. The show. I mean, they really moves. need triple threats. <laughs> triple threats. I mean. Yeah, true. the show moves. Um, but it, it's more than just the movement. The show requires everything. Mm -hmm. As you say, triple yeah. threats, and uh, and I'm so honored to be a part of this uh, because, as I've said quite a few times, there have not been roles written like this for men, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. right. on Broadway right. ever. Wow, to sing and dance and act at this level, mm -hmm. it's not like the dancing is here and then the singing is here and yeah. then the acting is right. Or, you know, everything is yeah. high stakes, um, and maybe I should say that I know of. I've never. Yeah. seen a musical right. for men like this. Right. Mm. And to also, on top of that, have this incredible story written by our Tony-nominated Dominique, Morris Dominique Moriso, yeah. to have this written for black men mm -hmm. is incredibly important because mm -hmm. there 
also hasn't been anything like that for us in the theater. Right. And it's incredible. So yes, we needed to be able to move. We also needed to be able to sing and we needed to be able to act. Yeah. And it's just incredible. It's truly, truly an incredible thing you, to be now, a part of. Do you feel like um, you had to push yourself to pull this off? Or, or do you kind of feel like, well, now I'm finally getting to show everyone what I can do? Or is it just a little of both? It's a little of both, less of the second, more of wow. the first. You really have um, a lot of growth. I definitely have. I mean, I've been working on this for a long time yeah. in the ways that I have. Um, but to have this opportunity where it literally is all out there, and I'm working with, when I found out that Derek Baskin was playing Otis, mm -hmm. I quivered a little bit because Derek is fantastic. Yeah. And I've watched Derek do a lot of work. Yeah. And I just was like, so I'm going to be sharing scenes with this guy. Uh -huh. mm. Then I got to. Uh -huh. I got to come with something, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And then the same with Ephraim. Ephraim and I also, we, we used to twirl, like twirl heavily for Sergio. We actually worked on Guys and Dolls together oh, wow. <coughs> with Sergio. Wow. So, you know, and, and F is one of those amazing people. I've watched him grow into this mm -hmm. thing that he is yeah. becoming, and he ain't even done mm -hmm. yet. You know, he's like just at the beginning and mm -hmm. I like if you can see what he does in the show this being beginning for him I'm so ecstatic to see where he's going right. um, but also knowing that I was going to be across working with Ephraim in this mm -hmm. capacity again I was just like okay I gotta gotta ramp up and then mm -hmm. I worked with Jeremy I didn't know who Jeremy Pope was mm -hmm. uh, but I had a little pre-pro work with him because mm -hmm. Sergio wanted me to help him brush him, speed him up on the choreography. So we were working in the room together and we were just trying to chit chatting a little bit. And mm -hmm. then he was like, well, I was in the invisible thread and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it just all fell into place. And I was like, that was you. Yeah. And, and I just went again, internally, I went, well, all right. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so, uh, definitely a lot of work. And then as I've told a couple of people, when I was reading for the audition for once in my life was yeah. in on the sides and they had like blacked out and they redacted everything beneath it. Mm. But it so it had the scene, you know, my scene with Otis when I asked him to be part of the group again. Yeah. yeah. Scene, 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 scene for once in my life, blackness. And I was like thinking this whole time I didn't know that for once in my life was a temptation song. And I was like, maybe this is something else. So I didn't really pay any attention to it. Went through the whole audition process, had my final audition, waiting to hear what that was gonna be. I decided to look up for once in my life, the temptations on YouTube and up pops this video of Paul Williams with the Timbs singing for once in my life. And I watched it and within the first like 30, to 40 seconds, I was like, I can't do this. Mm. Mm. And it was not that I couldn't sing the song. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched the video, watch the video of Paul Williams singing for once in my life. It's heartbreaking mm -hmm. watching this man sing this song near the, at a time in his life where things weren't peachy keen. Yeah. He wasn't on top of the world, but things weren't mm -hmm. all that beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And watching him, watching, hearing the pain in his voice, seeing it in his eyes and on his face and in his body. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to do this song any justice. And I was like, what am I getting myself into? M more on the lines of, am I going to be able to live up to any of this? Right. Um, so it was a lot of work, Wow. but I'm grateful for it because mm -hmm. every time I go into a project, I always hope and pray that I come out of the project better than I was before I walked into mm -hmm. it. And I can definitely say that working with everyone and by everyone, I mean, every single person in this cast and on our creative team, they make me better. Mm -hmm. Our cast is stupid. <laughs> and not stupid like, but you know, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Our cast yes. is stupid talented. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single person is crazy talented. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I've learned something from every one of them. 
So, yeah. Where'd you grow up and did you do this as a kid? I'm from El Paso, El Paso, oh. Texas. Now, mind you, every- <laughs> I always think of a course line when I- That is that. exactly why I say that. <laughs> okay. But <they're, laughs> El Paso ones don't have that kind of an accent. Right. So let's <laughs> dispel that right now. <laughs> um, El Paso, Texas, yeah, I was born and raised there. Went to Bel Air High School, Yo, Highlanders. Um, yes. And- Did musicals uh, there or no? No. No theater? Nope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that there. Right. Um, what we had in high school, though, that I found out that other high schools didn't have was we had a dance program. Mm. So you could take dance as an extracurricular activity, mm -hmm. and that was done throughout all the high schools, especially in El Paso. I don't know how it worked throughout mm -hmm. the entire state. But um, so I took dance. I was a gymnast for many, many, many okay. years. I always danced because dancing was fun. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I was actually doing choreography before I knew what choreography was for me. I was just taking steps that I knew and putting them together. I did my fourth grade talent show and there were four of us and there's two girls and two guys and picked out the clothes yes. and uh, <laughs> 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 I'm laughing because it dates me, but fine, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, Funky Town by Limp Sync. Oh. Yes. Won't you take of me course. to Funky Town? Yeah, but it wasn't like okay, a but kid Funky now. Town. I That's where you should be. Okay, now. I'm just. <laughs> you, can, you can still do Funky Town now. Could do it yes, now. Sure. Okay, thank you. you that really helps age. a lot. I'm any age. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, so, uh, but I didn't know that that's what choreography was. Yeah. Hmm. Putting stringing steps together. Right. Which Paul um, Williams also did for which the Temptations. Paul Williams That's did part for of the Temptations, show too, yeah. yeah, which is another reason why it's such a wonderful thing that I get to do because I'm also a choreographer in addition to uh -huh. all the other stuff that I love to do, performing, directing, writing. So, um, yeah, so that's where I'm from. Took dance after being a gymnast and uh, had a great time with Mu Delta Chi. That was the name of our dance team at Bel Air High School, mm -hmm. Moo Delta Chi, mm -hmm. which was her, our dance teacher's version of coming up with the Greek, you know, like a sorority name mm -hmm. for modern dance club, Moo oh. Delta Chi. Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or I should probably say thank you, Miss Dillon. <laughs> uh, but no, we didn't actually have musical theater. Yeah. They do now. Okay. I've gone back to my high school recently, and they have now a whole, they built a theater. Nice. And I actually drove by there when I was home last time, and I was like, whoa, wait, there's an actual theater with a marquee wow. and wow. everything. And I was like, why didn't we have this when right. I was in high school? Right. Um, but uh, they have it now. But there was a drama department, there was a choir, there was a band, and there was the dance department. So it took a moment, I guess, for them to all figure out how okay. to put that together. Right. There's no statue of the, there yet of you. Ha! No James Harper yes. statue. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, yes. <laughs> Caitlin, what are the yes. people online? Oh my asking? gosh. The Lord. So many questions. Two questions. Thank the you. first one, Alec wants to know what was it like right before you guys went to go perform at the Tonys on Sunday? What mm. were you, you guys feeling backstage? Oh, uh, it was, there was so much energy backstage. It was so much fun. You were at the top so of the many, show, too. We were at the top of the show. Yeah. I mean, of course, we we're like trying to focus, but you know what we do is we got into a group as we do, and we did, we hold hands uh -huh. and we do a quick prayer. Love and it. that is what we do every night before the show. And then the five of us get together and do a little circle. Now that was harder to do because Derek had to be preset, but we just looked at each other and said, let's do what we do. Mm -hmm. Love you, we love each other. And you breathe and you go, you know, but it was exciting backstage. It was a very it. exciting backstage, yeah. That's amazing. And we'll just do one last question. Sorry, I took so much time. No, no not at all. You can good. talk for as long he as you want. He talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elise <laughs> wants to know, what is your favorite song to sing in the show every night? Yeah, that's so hard because <laughs> I, I, it really is a hard question to ask, and it's a question that people ask yeah. often. I think the, the common answer that people expect me to say is for once in my life, and I love that song because it's my 11 o'clock number. I have an 11 o'clock number in a Broadway show. Um, it's you my have an 11 o'clock, like, you have a whole moment. thing. Moment. It's you have a, a whole, there's a but, moment. moment. <laughs> but I, I love My Girl because it's the yeah. first time that we, we sit and we sing together. Mm -hmm. And people love that song. And that's also that first song where people, you hear the audience singing. Like as soon as David says, I got sunshine, you can hear almost the entire audience singing it. Mm -hmm. And the My Girl, My Girl, My Girl. Right. So that's one of my favorite, favorite things to sing. And then Can't Get Next to You at the top of Act Two. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I can't wait to go back. The show is so good. Mm -hmm. be like, it is so much you've fun. already seen it. I've seen it twice. Twice. So I'll be back. You rock. I'll be back. We're back. Always. <laughs> There'll be a third and a fourth. I got more people to bring. Yes. Awesome. We appreciate that. I love it. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. good to see you. Thank you for coming. Thank you guys in. out there. Uh, and everyone, go see Ain't Too Proud. The life and times of the temptation. I'll never say that, but I will. He's too, he's too cool. I'll say it. He's too cool. Come like, see like to Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations oh. at the Imperial oh. Theater. Yes. Oh. One of the best theaters on Broadway, by the way. Yeah. Yes. So much history there. Yes. So much history. Yes. I know. Great to be a part of that yeah. history, too. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Remember, no live at 5 tomorrow, but be sure to tune in next week. We talk to Shoshana Bean, Leslie Kritzer, and a whole lot more.